So what I want you to do is I want you to see Cisco Catalyst Center, formerly known as Cisco DNA Center, before we jump into this. My first really big experience working with DNA Center came when I was studying for my CCIE exam. And that is actually on the CCIE exam, is how to actually build a campus, design, implement, provision a campus with policies, uh, on the exam, that's that's part of the lab exam, so you have to know how to do it. But they don't make you, Cisco doesn't make you know how to do it until you get to the CCIE. So the concepts of working with Catalyst Center are very abstract. So I want you to see it. I think that's where I feel very strong about seeing it. Now, why the rebrand from Cisco DNA Center to Cisco Catalyst Center? Look, I wasn't in the room when they chose to do that. But my hunch is, is that it wasn't very clear. The name DNA Center wasn't very clear uh, when th that it was for enterprises. Cisco DNA Center, aka now Catalyst Center, relies heavily on the Catalyst 9000 series of devices. Similar to how ACI relies on the Nexus 9000 series, and it's a controller that controls your fleet of infrastructure in a data center. We're now talking about the Catalyst series uh, and on the enterprise side of things. So very similar. But how the, the enterprise is actually used, what actually goes on, the types of traffic in an enterprise, there's no comparison to a data center at this point. So what a campus needs is very different from, say, what a data center needs. And the Catalyst 9000 series solves that problem. So right here, I've got the always on Catalyst Center box up. You see, here's the go to link. It is a web-based GUI, just like most software-defined networking controllers are now. And here's the credentials. So when I log into this, we're going to accept the self-signed certificate. And then we're going to get prompted with the uh, DNA Center uh, credentials here. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to grab the username is DevNet user, and the password is Cisco123! exclamation mark. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type DevNet user paste in the password, and hit log in. And from here, I'll be able to better explain what the DNA Center, aka Catalyst Center, is really all about. So we're logged into Cisco DNA Center, and what I want to do is I want to talk about what this thing actually is supposed to do and what it brings to the table that's so incredible and unique. With a large global enterprise or even a large campus, Let's say this is your geographic area that your campus exists in. This could be a college campus. And you've got a building here. Maybe you've got a building here, a building here, a building here. Maybe you've got a restaurant right here, you know, and maybe a little amphitheater right here. You've got, you know, something over here. I don't know. And let's say you, you work on this campus, you work right here. So your desk is here. You sit down, you've got a laptop and you sit there. And let's say you are in the accounting department. And this is really great because as an accounting professional, you know, there's going to be some applications that you log into. There's probably going to be a file share that you need access to. There's basically just all of the things that you would use to collaborate with for your department and your cost center, your silo, all of these things are going to be specific to you in your box. You're going to have policies. Maybe those are, you know, group policies from Windows Active Directory. Uh, and maybe, you know, you plug in and you're going to be attached to a certain VLAN, like VLAN 23, to make up something. Now, here's the kicker. What happens when you need to go visit someone in this building and work on something and show them something that you have access to in the accounting? And then later, you've got to go over here. And then you've got to go over here. And then you've got to come back here. Do you see where the problem lies in? The way the current infrastructure works, the way current uh, you know, environments work, is you're usually siloed to your physical location. Your physical location determines what VLAN you can attach to, and therefore what policies or accesses you can get. And when you move away from that physical location to somewhere else, you lose that. This is the problem that DNA Center, aka Catalyst Center, solves. 
what they've created is now for groups of employees or people or guests, basically any users on your campus, we can attach policies to their computer, to their MAC address. And as they roam throughout the campus, that MAC address obviously goes with them and so do things like their VLAN configurations and therefore all of the connectivity that they have. So if I had a file share, let's say this was my data center right here and out here is how we get you know, to the internet. That's where our WAN connectivity is. Let's say this machine, me right here, I'm the machine or my laptop is the machine, needs access to a file share that's in the data center. If I go down here to visit my friend and need to show them that file, my connectivity can still reach that data center because it's not about my physical location anymore. It's about my identity and the policies that grant me access wherever I go. Now still, how does this seem possible? Because how would a VLAN possibly follow me wherever I go? Well, it uses a fabric, much like how Nexus and ACI use the fabric. We are, again, typically having ISIS as our underlay, and we've got VXLAN as our overlay. But the difference is in the data center, we discovered where applications were using BGP using BGP. We're not using BGP, which is really EVPN, like we were in the data center in DNA Center. Instead, we use something called LISP, Location Identity Separation Protocol. So the idea is your identity and your location can be separated. And wherever you go, your identities and your current location can be updated. And therefore, we can say, okay, when you want to tunnel layer two packets to this device, this is their new location. So make sure you give them their connectivity and it follows their identity. This is wildly complex. And I don't fully think that, uh, you know, as you're going through your beginner's DevNet associate journey, I don't think you need to memorize this, okay? I'm just giving you context as to what DNA Center can do or what Catalyst Center can do and what its purpose is. Its purpose is to allow people to freely move throughout a campus and still maintain their same connectivity that they have at their desk. Now, take it a step further. Your campus can be global. Let's say this was all happening in San Francisco. What happens... When I fly to London and work on our campus in London, well, if that London site is you know, basically adopted to our Catalyst Center controller, then the policies go with me. And I still maintain the same connectivity. That, that's a really powerful thing to understand. So in the next video, we're going to break down very basically what the components of Catalyst Center are that we can that way we can understand how this campus and this uh, connectivity and all of this stuff comes to be